Hi there, my name's Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to our sixth video in our Sparkle series. Sparkle stands for S for Sing, P for Patterns, A for Automatic, R for Rote, K for Knowledge, L for Landmark and E for Enjoy. And today we're looking at L for Landmark Notes. In this video we're going to cover what landmark notes are, how to teach landmark notes and how to support landmark note with alphabet strings. So by the end of this video, you'll feel more confident about using landmark notes in your teaching. Let's start by taking a look at what landmark notes are. So landmark notes are notes that are easily recognisable. Your brain retrieves them automatically. They are the no brainers that we talked about in the automatic video. And not only do we recognise them instantly, but we can also name them and also play them. So for example, if I show you this note, treble G, you can name it and you can sense where it lives on the keyboard. That's a good landmark note. If I do this, then it's not so familiar unless you're a flute player. Um, and most people have to go through some sort of retrieval strategy just to work it out. Well, we don't want that to happen, really. We want to be able to look at a note, especially the most common notes, and know what it is. So there are three sets of landmark notes, C, G and F. So let me just get my duster. And I want to draw those for you because they make a really beautiful pattern. So let's start with our middle C, there and there. And then we'll go to treble G, treble C, high F, and then high C up here. It's a bit crooked, but you get the idea. And then down here, I'm going middle C down to base F, base C, low G, and low C. And I think that just is a beautiful pattern. And when you start to look at it, you see all this symmetry that's going on between the lines and the spaces and things. And you'll notice that each of those notes I gave a particular name because I think that really helps our pupils then identify from the notation onto the piano. And Let's today just focus on the five C's. So high C, treble C, middle C, bass C, and low C. The five C's. So how to introduce landmark notes now to pupils? Well, Introducing the notes on the staves, for example, the five C's, can, should just be part of a carefully staged introduction. So the student should already be familiar with the notes on the keyboard before you introduce this. They'll know where to find each of those notes and they'll be able to play and name each note with its specific name. Play middle C, play bass C, play low C, play high C. You can play all sorts of games which we're going to look at in the final video. They'll know about probably the grand stave already and they'll also have been introduced to middle C and that treble G and the bass F. So before we start any work on introducing the five C's on the stave, they'll already have that information already in them. So when it comes to the lesson, then introducing the five C's should be the main focus of the lesson. Now, let me just put all this stuff down. I like to start this sort of thing away from the keyboard. Um, although, because I find that pupils can manipulate it and I love to use um, a floor stage. And this particular one is the one I use these days. This is called a manumat. And that goes on the floor and myself and my pupil, we go and mess around on the floor for a little bit. So to go with that, we have um, treble clefs and bass clefs here. And then we have 
notes that look like this and that's really good because you can then manipulate them um, and you also have little counters so that helps them to identify them so we don't want to give them too much cognitive overload by having to remember constantly what this note is that they're called so I would start probably away from the piano however it is really important I'm just going to drop that on the floor it is really important that you relate it back to the piano as quickly as you possibly can so your teaching should be explicit and direct making all the details obvious and this is something we overlook as teachers we don't make it obvious enough all the details so let's say that the learning objective is for the pupil to recognize and play by the 5C landmark notes and patterns from the music. So I might say, here is the grand stave with treble G for the higher notes and bass F for the lower notes. Middle C lives here in the middle. Treble C lives in a space here where high C needs its own two special lines. Now, just look at where bass C and low C live. It's like a mirror image with bass C on a space just like treble C and low C on those two special lines just like high C. So you're creating also a little bit of sense of mystery and excitement about it. That helps them to remember it as well. After I'd introduced it, I would get the pupil to uh, write down where each of the note lives to for the pupil to say it back to me and then write it down in their practice book. Either the pupil writes it or you write it, but you do it together. So this is the cognitive part of the learning process, by the way. Getting them to say it and getting them to really recognise and play around, manipulate where those notes live. Having done it on the floor, it's then straight back to the piano and asking the pupils to play those landmark C's on the piano. And at this point, I might then have some flashcards like this one. These are available uh, within the community. We have them in our sight reading box. And here you can see here are our five C's. And then there is a landmark note, uh, a flashcard for each one. So the pupil would look at that. They might be able to say that it's middle C and play middle C. So this is all quite hard work though, of course. And uh, so at that point, having gone through all this and then gone to the piano, you might then change the activity. But before the end of the lesson, go back to it and ask the pupil to tell you again, where do these five C's live? And you're probably going to have to help them. Depends on the pupil and they're all different, aren't they? Um, or you might go back to the floor stay, for example, and muddle up all the notes. You know, oh, I wonder, oh, I wonder whether you can put that pattern back together again. Of course, this will need to be followed up in the subsequent lessons with lots, and I mean lots and lots of reinforcement um, in as many different um, enjoyable games and activities as you can possibly think of. And there'll be more on that in tomorrow's video. And finally, let me share my ideas for supporting landmark note reading with alphabet strings. So a change of card here. So these are my alphabet strings. And alphabet strings are literally strings of letters that we associate around particular notes. For example, an alphabet string around C might be C, D, E, F, G, or G, F, E, D, C, C, E, G, I thought there was another one there, or G, G, C. So these are something that I tried out a couple of years ago in my own teaching and I found them really useful and I think other people who've started to use them as well have also found them useful. And the reason I started to use them was the realisation that as experts we take the musical alphabet far too much for granted. So if I say C, D, E, F, G, then to you that has some musical meaning. Or for example C, E, G. You know, I don't even have to sing it, I just say it and immediately we're aware that it is a major triad. And those notes belong together. But for our pupils, well, I'm not so sure that that does have any meaning. So let me show you what I mean with the H experiment. So I'm just going to rub all this off 
and I want you to imagine for a moment that the musical alphabet starts on H, okay? So we've got H, I, J, K, L, M, N. That's our musical alphabet. So could we say the musical alphabet? All together, you ready? And H, I, J, K, L, M, N. That seems to be okay, doesn't it? Can we go backwards? N, M, L, K, J, I, H. Oh, that's very good. Could you now do the H major triad? The triad of H major. So that would be H, J, L. Okay. And what about I minor? I, K, M. Feels a bit odd, doesn't it? Feels a bit strange, these random letters that we're using. It has no meaning. Yeah? So that's one thing. When we have them like this for us, they have no meaning. I think that that's often what our pupils associate it with as well. Just think about the way that we introduce the musical alphabet. It's often introduced in the first lesson, in the first few lessons, followed up a few weeks, and then it kind of gets dropped. So what happens then if I, um, if I rub this out? I wonder whether you could still say the musical alphabet starting on H. Ready? Off you go. That seemed to go all right, didn't it? Can you go backwards? Off you go. How did that feel? A little bit harder? Mm suspect we all got lost somewhere in here. What about H major? Any any good? I minor? Am I making my point? You know, it is hard work when things have no meaning. So hence the use of the alphabet strings. And I think alphabet strings have to be taught as taught and played with as consciously as landmark notes and note naming. So I have lots of fun with my pupils. I'm just going to pick up my, some alphabet strings again. Um, I have lots of fun with my pupils, just even doing very simple things like this. We're going to play a copycat game. Um, so, okay. And I like to march on the spot with this one. So I'm just going to do it very quietly. And I say thing, I say this first and then you copy. All right. Off I go. C, D, E, F, G. Your turn. My turn. G, G, C. Your turn. Squeaky floor. G, F, E, D, C. Your turn. And last one. C, E, G. Your turn. I like the marching because it gives us something else to, to do. It's quite fun trying to march and do these at the same time. And also it puts it all within a rhythmic framework, doesn't it? More of those in tomorrow's video. So to wrap up, we have covered what landmark notes are, how to teach landmark notes and how to support landmark notes with alphabet strings. And I hope that you're now feeling more confident about using landmark notes in your teaching. So in the next and the last video, E for Enjoy, we'll be looking at how to really make lessons go with a zing and be fun and yet full of musical purpose and meaning. I'm Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. Thanks for watching. Happy teaching.